Hello, my name is Megan, and today I will be telling you about my story with idiopathic hypersomnia. My hypersomnia began when I was in high school in 11th grade. I started falling asleep in class, which was unlike me, because I was always a successful and eager student who loved to learn. It was also getting harder for me to wake up. I constantly wanted to sleep, and I was always tired. I went to countless doctors in many different specialties and was often dismissed, or was told I was just being a teenager or had depression and ADD. I was put on antidepressants and stimulants, and although I was still very tired, I was able to manage. During college, though, my symptoms continued to worsen. It was becoming even harder for me to wake up. Normal alarm clocks did nothing. An alarm clock that shook my bed, had loud tones, and flashed lights worked for a few weeks, but then I would be able to sleep right through it. Twice, my roommates even called campus security on me because I was unresponsive. I was evaluated to see if I had overdosed on drugs. I hadn't. I was simply sleeping that deeply. Many days, I was so tired that trying to walk a short distance to class required more energy than I had. Yet I was still told that I was just depressed. I was told by many different doctors that I needed to change my diet, exercise more, go to sleep earlier, drink caffeine, and even to just wake up earlier. One day in class, while struggling to stay awake, I looked down and suddenly my desk was floating on the island in the middle of the ocean. It was this new symptom of hallucination that finally led one doctor to believe that I was not just a typical sleep deprived college student. He wondered if I had narcolepsy. He put me in touch with the physicians at the Stanford Center for Narcolepsy, who after reviewing my lab work and case, referred me to a hypersomnia specialist, Dr. David Rye at Emory. It was here that I finally received a night and daytime sleep study along with a spinal tap. After five years of waiting, I finally received a diagnosis. I had idiopathic hypersomnia. It was such relief to have a diagnosis that verified that my symptoms were real and not just in my head. This relief was short-lived though. Since the disorder is just idiopathic, there is no known cause and there is no cure. By my third year in college, my sleep kept worsening. At this point, I was sleeping more than 20 hours a day. I ended up having to leave college and move back home. I cannot even begin to describe how devastating this was for me. It felt like IH had won and I had failed. IH officially ruled my life. Since there are no IH specific medications, many patients, including myself, end up on an exhausting journey to try and find a medicine that will help relieve at least some of the symptoms. I've tried countless stimulants and almost all the narcolepsy medicines available. I've also tried flumazenil, ketamine, and even some antibiotics. Only once has the medicine made me feel truly awake. This happened when I was in a clinical trial for penetetrazole. On this drug, I woke up on my own at 9 a.m. and I literally cried. I felt awake for the first time. The weight of sleepiness and brain fog lifted off my shoulders. And what a wonderful feeling this was. Unfortunately, penetetrazole is still in trial and unavailable for compassionate use. I have hopes though that one day, all of us with IH will have medicine that makes us feel awake. When you tell someone that you have a sleep disorder, they think that it only affects your sleep. But the reality though, is that idiopathic hypersomnia has negatively affected every single aspect of my life. My life is completely affected by this disorder. I want to be a normal, young, independent adult, but IH makes this impossible. For starters, I have to sleep at least 14 to 16 hours in a single sleep session. I can never get enough sleep, but I can get too little. And even with all this sleep, I never feel awake. I have to live my life with very limited hours and extremely limited energy. Right now, I work part-time as a medical scribe. I work one to five, Monday through Thursday, and I only have this job because I work for a family friend who is able to accommodate my schedule. If it was not for him, I'm not sure that I've been able to find a job. I found that even afternoon or evening shift jobs require morning training, which I would physically not be able to do. Every night I go to bed around 10 p.m. On the days I work, I wake up at 12.30 p.m. the next day. This seems like it would be late enough, but honestly, I'm not sure much longer I can keep this up. 12.30 in the afternoon is even becoming too early for me. On the days that I have off, I sleep until at least 2 p.m. It is not unusual for me to sleep much later than this, sometimes even until 6 p.m. or later. This sleep pattern of extremely long periods of continuous sleep, often with great difficulty awakening, is considered to be IH with long sleep time. 
Waking up for me is close to impossible and I cannot wake up on my own. Most days I set alarms and I also have my family call my cell phone and house phone. It can take upwards of 40 phone calls with several alarms going off at the same time for me to wake up. If my roommate or someone else is around, they can try to wake me up in person, but it can take multiple attempts. And waking me up is not a fun job. I have even been argumentative and combative to people trying to wake me. I don't remember. I will even talk and say that I'm awake, but really, I am not. And then there are some times when I simply cannot be woken. Waking up and getting out of bed each day is the hardest thing that I have to do. The best way I can describe it is that it is physically painful and exhausting. Getting out of bed feels to me like climbing Mount Everest. It is truly that hard. And this happens every single day. Then one is up, despite having slept soundly the whole time, I'm still so incredibly tired and I do not feel awake or refreshed. Just try to imagine that for a minute. Never ever feeling awake. This is my reality. Every single day I wake up knowing that I'm going to struggle to get through the day simply because of how tired I am. At times I've had to have help with simple everyday tasks such as cleaning, cooking, and even driving. I've sat in my car parked at the grocery store crying for half an hour just trying to find the energy to go inside. Some days I honestly feel like I am too tired to breathe. Then there's the brain fog. IH makes it feel like my brain is old and senile instead of one that belongs to a young adult. Was a valedictorian in high school, I scored highly on my ACTs, and I entered college with scholarships. Deep down, I know that I am still smart, but IH makes me feel as though I'm not. The brain fog has my brain locked up. I know that the information is there somewhere, but my brain is too sleepy to access it. Brain fog causes me to have horrible memory. Things are in one ear and out the other. For example, I cannot remember appointments despite having written them down in multiple places. I have to rely on others to remind me of everything. IH has also affected my health in other ways. Most days I only eat one real meal as I sleep through breakfast and lunch. I cannot exercise. I simply do not have the time or the energy. If I do not get enough sleep, my mood is negatively affected and I feel physically sick with headaches and extreme nausea. Even have aches and pains simply from sleeping so much and being in one position for such a long period of time. Another area of my life that has been negatively affected by IH is my social life. I've lost many friends and relationships have been impacted because of it. I'll make plans, but often I end up having to cancel them because I'm too tired. And if I do manage to go out, I'm always the last to show up and the first to leave because I have to get enough sleep. And then there's dating. The time and energy to date simply did not exist. And if they didn't get happen, how's a relationship to happen? If you're in a relationship with someone, they want to spend time with you. They want to go out, do projects around the house, or simply take a walk. But I prevent you from doing these things. Eventually, they get tired of doing things alone, and the relationship ends. There are also other considerations which impact having a future with me. I've always dreamt of having children, but right now, this could not happen. I would sleep right through a baby crying and be too tired to care for them. Even without children, my partner would have to take on much of the home responsibilities. Then there's the aspect of financial responsibility. Right now, I barely make enough to get by and I have to rely on my family for financial help. Many medications used to treat people with IH are extremely expensive. Even with approval from insurance, my co-pays for medicines have ranged from hundreds to even a thousand dollars just for a 30-day supply. It is very frustrating to be at an age where I should be independent and saving for my future, but I can't. Right now, I can only hold a part-time job, and I'm not even sure how much longer I'll be able to do this. If someone wants a future with me, it means accepting full financial responsibility for our family and covering the cost of an expensive chronic disease. Because of IH, the possibility that I will find someone willing to make a lifetime commitment with me is extremely low. I'm only 26 years old, but this is my reality. IH affects not only my everyday life, but my entire future. Lastly, on a daily basis, I have to deal with people who either don't believe that IH is real or who cannot understand it. Without a definitive test to point to or a physical symptom that someone can see, it is very difficult for others to believe that I'm sick. Even with a diagnosis, I've been dismissed by peers, professors, and even doctors because they do not believe it is real disorder. Since I do not look sick, they think that I am just lazy. 
They think if I only tried harder, I would be fine. Believe me, every single day, I work harder than the average person just to get by. I understand that everyone gets tired. My tired is not a normal person's tired. People without IH cannot fathom the depth and degree of my tiredness. I'm a young adult with aspirations and dreams. I want to finish college and become a physician's assistant as I had initially planned. I want to go out with friends. I want to hike again and enjoy other hobbies. I want to travel. I want to volunteer and help others. I want to meet someone and think about having a family one day. But I'm too tired to do any of this. I'm quite literally sleeping my life away. I want to leave you today with a few numbers. Take an average person who sleeps eight hours a day. If this person lives to be 79 years old, they will spend third of their life for about 26 years asleep. Now take me living with IH. If I live to be 79 years old, I'll spend almost two thirds of my life asleep. That's a whopping 50 years of my life asleep. I'm not exaggerating when I say that I am sleeping my life away.